I am fully expecting 2024 to be a huge year for Svelte. Svelte 5 is coming, the community is growing, support is growing on all this stuff. I really think that we are in for an extremely, extremely exciting year. So I think right now is the perfect time if you're new to it or if you're just working on learning it now, now is a great time to jump deep into Svelte and also to jump deep into learning the new rune system. And the way I recommend doing that is with the event that's been going on this December, Advent of Svelte. Advent of Svelte is a set of challenges that's being put together by the Svelte Society. This has been going on since the beginning of December. I deliberately waited until towards the end to actually put out a video on this, uh, mostly because I want to make sure that there's like a full roster of challenges ready when I put this out so that when you guys go and try out some of these, you can get into some of the really advanced ones later and you have a wider array of things to choose from because the way these sort of advent of whatever's tend to work is you go in, you do a few, you're really consistent for like five days and then people are people and we forget about it and move on. So I wanted to make sure that we get in towards the end so that you have as we can so that as many people as possible can tackle some of these later challenges because some of these are really, really cool. So that's why I waited to do this so long. But this is a really, really great way, I think, to uh, test out the new rune system to just get a set of problems to actually try and solve because I've said this in other videos and I'll say this again here. If you guys want to learn how to get better at a framework or a technology or really anything, the best way is to just do it. Tutorial hell will only get you so far and very much just going through and trying to solve these and coming up with your own solutions is great and having a prompt to start with is also great because one of the number one questions I get asked and I asked myself back before I started doing this is okay what do I build you know people want to try and build stuff what do you build build this build some of the really cool stuff in here and uh today I want to show you guys some of the things that I've built solving these myself so the first one I want to show you guys is my solution to day one this was the naughty or nice list problem very simple nothing too crazy going on here we just get some data back from the endpoint that the Svelte Society exposes for us we get a list of kids and a tally of whether or not they're naughty or nice I went ahead and I tried to do some interesting data manipulation on this I mostly took this as an algorithm problem so you can see my solution here I have two lists. I have a nice list in descending order and a naughty list in ascending order. That was kind of a neat data manipulation problem because you just get all of these in unsorted in one giant array. So the way I went about solving that is I created two different algorithms. Um, this is really what I think these advent sort of things are about. It's about just coming up with weird random solutions, trying stuff, messing around. So for this guy right here, I went ahead and I did, I fetched all the data from their endpoint, uh, typed it, and then I went ahead and I made two different algorithms. The first algorithm I made, I believe is an N cubed algorithm, I think. Um, definitely fact check me on some of this stuff. I looked at it with my friends, but it's been like two years since I've done any algorithmic analysis stuff in school. So I wanted to do it again for fun, just to try and make a more optimized algorithm them, and I'm sure that there are better ways to do this than the ways I came up with here. This is just what I came up with at 2 a.m. one day. I was just messing around. I have an insert and order which I implemented, which runs in n squared time, and then I just went through the entire array, so it's just n squared times n, so I believe this whole thing is n cubed, so we're able to create our naughty and our nice list in n cubed time, and then I created another algorithm right here, alg2, where uh, I believe this entire thing is running in n log n time, and the way I calculated that is just this sorted. I'm just running a basic sort. Uh, I believe the JS sort implementation is n log n. It should be n log n because you can get a sort in n log n. So I believe it is. Uh, then I went ahead, I went over the whole array to get the index of where the naughty list should start and the nice list should start. I had to go ahead and split it off to split into the naughty and nice list. These both run in O of n. Then finally, I went ahead and reversed the nice list because again, I wanted to have one in descending and one in ascending and that result resulted in having a more complicated process for the sort of sorts. So I went ahead, did all that stuff, returned it down, and then the page dots felt is literally just printing this stuff out. So again, this was not a crazy difficult solution, but it was fun to mess around with this stuff. And it's the kind of thing I recommend you guys do to get better at a lot of these programming concepts. Now, the other two days I want to feature here get much deeper into actual like state management concepts, runes and stuff like that. So the next one we'll talk about is going to be day three. This one I went pretty hard on. I did a lot for this. So for day three, what we had to do is we fetch from their endpoint. We get a bunch of different, uh, 
we get a bunch of different stops and the weight for each stop. And they wanted us to create a load balancer for this. So for my load ba balancer, I went ahead here. I have a list of kids where none of them are loaded into the, none of these stops are loaded yet. So what we went ahead and we can do is when you hit load, it'll move these over into the loaded section. So we just keep loading these up. And then eventually at the top, it'll tell me, hey, you overloaded. We can only have up to 100 kilograms. We can remove these, balance it out, et cetera. So this was a really cool problem. Um, I was using this also as a way to test out uh, Shad CN for Svelte, which is again the kind of thing I recommend you guys do with this. Uh, so yeah, we built this out and the way we actually implemented it was, it really wasn't too terrible um, from the props. And remember, this is in runes mode now. So instead of doing export let data, we're just doing const data equals props. We're destructuring out of the props to get our data from the server. Then we went ahead and said, okay, our stop entries are gonna have name and weight. We create an unloaded and a loaded array um, on mount, because again, we don't have on mount anymore because it's changing. This is why I recommend you play with runes. The new way of doing things is with the new effect rune. So we say the effect, when we load, our unloaded is now just equal to the data.stops because we just wanna pull all our data into that. Then once we've set our unloaded, we can go ahead and print that out. So our UI just goes ahead and it prints out everything within our unloaded array. However, you'll notice I'm not printing out unloaded, I'm printing out unloaded sorted. This is using the new derived rune, which I think is super, super helpful. The way we set that up is I went over here and I set derived equals and I made a function here. And then what this function will do is it'll check the sort direction of my unloaded array, whether or not I have it set to ascending or descending, and then it'll go ahead and just return it sorted in that direction. So I have this unloaded sorted, which will then refire this state and update the DOM every single time we change this. So if you go to to our actual UI here. If I wanted to set this to be descending, I hit this button, which I'll show you the code in a moment. You hit this, it flips up and down because it's changing the state variable under the hood. It's changing my unloaded sort direction, which is causing this derive to rerun and it's causing our UI to change. So getting used to these new patterns is gonna be very important going into Spell 5. Um, I'll make a dedicated video on this, but I honestly feel like Svelte 5, these new runes and all this stuff, this feels very similar to React. It feels a lot like the way, if you're really good at lighting, writing React code or you're used to React code, you're gonna like this a lot. Um, personally, I like derived and effect a lot better than the dollar sign that we had before and not having a dependency array within the effect or within the derived is a godsend because there is no, I mean, there's still some foot guns you can do, but it's not one tenth as bad as it is in React. So that's the general of how I'm implementing all this stuff. I mean, obviously there's some stuff I missed here, but uh, in all of this code is also linked down below. So I open sourced all of this as I always do. I have a repo with the advent of Svelte solutions I've done. Um, you'll notice that I did like five or six of them, which is to be expected. So that's why, again, I wanted to do this later because most people will end up doing five or six. So I wanted you to do some of the later ones. So yeah, that's all we really have for day three. Then finally, I wanna show you guys day six. This this was actually a really cool problem. I This was very, very creative on their end. Uh, what this problem is, is they wanted you to set up a like system to track beats per minute when you're like tapping. So like if you're like tapping your finger or something like that, what is the beats per minute of that? So I set this up in, uh, well, I guess I'll just show you and then I'll talk about how I set it up. So you go ahead and you hit add beat. It'll tell you when those beats were added in relation to when you loaded the page. And I just keep clicking these and I'm clicking at an average BPM of about 110-ish. I'm not really keeping rhythm or anything like that. Or what I can do is I can clear these and if you wanna see how this would work, and I also added this for testing to start at a 120 beats per minute. We just do this, it'll add these beats in, and it'll get us a nice average beats per minute of about 120. So now for the implementation. This was really cool. The way I implemented this is by obviously using a bunch of state variables. When we load into the page, we set up an array of beats. That was that thing you saw there on the side, those millisecond counters. Those are just the beats. The beats are just time codes of when I actually put down the beat. Um, then we have the initial milliseconds. That's when we load onto the page because I don't want to store all of the milliseconds like back from, cause I'm doing this by getting time and get time will return the milliseconds since like 1970. I don't need to store that. I'll just store the milliseconds since we loaded the page to get a smaller number to slightly optimize it so that we don't have gigantic numbers that we're running average, we're running averages over. 
Then we go ahead and we say, okay, the beats difference average total is gonna be zero. I'll talk about this later. Then we're gonna set the auto interval to be null. This is again, just to keep track of the auto beat interval so that we can clear it on that second button press, that stop auto interval. This is just for that. We'll start with the add beat function. This is actually a pretty simple function. All we have to do is get the current time. We get the beat, which is just now dot get time minus the initial milliseconds. So if I put something in one second after loading the page, this will be about a thousand. Then we go ahead and we check, okay, if there are, if there's already a beat in the array, because what we wanna get is we wanna get the average distance between the beats, not the average distance between the beats and between the init and the first beat. So like if you imagine for, um, if you imagine we initialized at 100, then I have a beat at 123, then I have a beat at 444. I wanna get the average distance between these two, not the difference between all three of these, if that makes any sense. So. That's why I'm only adding the beats difference total if there already was in there. So if we're adding 444 to our array of beats, we already have these two in here. So we just wanna go ahead and say, okay, this uh, 123 and 144, we're gonna get the difference between these two. So that's just gonna be this beat minus this beat, which is gonna be, you know, whatever that is. We add that to our total and then we push the beat to the array of beats. That's all set and done. Then we have some derived functions down below, which we can use to get the average. So the way we get the average time between beats is we just make sure, okay, if we have at least two beats, then we can get an average between them. Otherwise it's just gonna be zero. Then if we have uh, at least two beats, we can just do the difference between them divided by the length minus one. So in that case, in that example, we had one, two, three, and four, four, four. The difference between those is whatever that is. Then the beats.length minus one is one. So it's just the difference between those two is our average. And then you can expand that upward and that's how we get our average time between beats. Then our beats per minute is really simple. We just take our average time between beats. If it's zero, we return zero. And then if it's not, we go ahead and we just say one minute divided by the average time between beats. And you can see this working because we go ahead and we start our auto beat, which is running every 500 milliseconds. We get 120 beats per minute. Our average is correct. So all that stuff checks out. This was pretty cool. Um, I also have the auto beat thing and all that's doing is just setting an interval to add a beat every 500 seconds. Then the auto interval is the interval so that when we want to clear it, we can just clear this interval. Really basic stuff. And uh, yeah, UI is nothing special, but this whole thing, uh, I thought this was a really cool problem. I enjoyed solving this and that's the, that's the theme of this video. Just try these problems, figure some stuff out, and you'll learn a lot about how this framework works, a lot about how runes work, and you will you'll be a better dev. So definitely try this stuff out. If you enjoyed this little breakdown, make sure you like and subscribe. We'll have tons more Svelte content going into the new year. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later.